Welcome back to The Contrarian, everybody. I'm Logan. I hope you're all doing well today. I just wanted to make a touch-up video on the gold and silver markets. I made a video actually about a week ago. I think it was actually today, a week ago, Wednesday, basically talking about just the amazing setup that silver was presenting back then. And, of course, since then we've seen silver rally fairly aggressively. On Friday, of course, we had a plus... 6 or 7 percent day on Friday to close out the week and we actually closed the week at 12 year highs in the price of silver and then Monday and Tuesday so far this week have been very strong and then today we did consolidate and correct a little bit lower but still very bullish outlook in silver and I just wanted to maybe comment in terms of why silver is breaking out now and kind of going forward what I expect to play out in the silver market and gold as well. I'll talk a little bit about gold, but it's maybe a little more clear of a setup with gold. So silver, of course, has really, I would say, been kind of the redheaded stepchild of the last decade when it comes to overall assets in the fact that silver has really underperformed basically everything else. Silver, of course, is still not anywhere near its all-time highs both when it peaked at around $50 back in 1980 and around $50 again back in 2011, silver is still well below that mark and it has not visited that mark for, you know, 13 years now. So there's just a lot of, I would say, um, cynicism and skepticism over the years, and rightly so, that has built up in silver. And gold has maybe had a little bit of that, but not as much because, of course, gold didn't correct as much from 2011, got down to maybe 1100 and 1200 um, traded there for a few years before rallying back. And, you know, of course, since then, gold has been up fairly dramatically and has performed very well. Um, so I think gold is maybe not in as uh, dead of a position of a market as what silver has been. But it's just really interesting to see how price action, you know, even just looking in the last week, silver being up maybe 10% or something like that. I mean, even just that dramatically does change people's opinions out there. And I think you're starting to see just overall enthusiasm for silver begin to change, uh, really going from kind of a overlooked and dead market. Eventually, I think a lot of people will start getting into silver, you know, not maybe for the correct reasons. They'll get into it because they see it as kind of the next get rich quick type of scenario. And it's almost at that point when I would be looking to get out personally, of course, I can't provide advice in terms of when to exit silver if you are investing in silver in some capacity. But, you know, looking at prior peaks, whether it was 1980 or 2011, um, it was kind of at these blow off top kind of peaks where you know, not only was there a huge amount of enthusiasm all of a sudden for this market that had really not been anywhere in the mainstream financial media, but also you suddenly had just random investors, you know, your retail investors suddenly interested in this asset because of its extremely good performance for the last year or two. And it's kind of at that point when you start having everyday people buying silver bullion or silver stocks. Um, that you might start to think, okay, this might be kind of an overheated market at this point. And we're definitely nowhere near that point in silver. The miners, of course, are still very undervalued relative to where the metal prices are, both in gold and in silver. We're maybe starting to see a little bit of that catch-up take place in the miners, but, you know, there's still a lot of that to be had. And, of course, with silver even just catching up, to gold with regards to, you know, even getting back to silver's prior all-time highs, we still have a lot of catching up to do. So although there are people out there saying like, oh, if you analyze, you know, the silver market, you know, try to time these intermediate cycles and things like that, that's not me personally. I don't try to time it that precisely, you know, yeah, maybe you could try to do that if you're really paying attention to a lot of the technicals and things like that. But A, I don't really have the time and mental capacity to do that. And B, I think you actually might be at risk of missing out if, for example, you think that silver might, 
you know, have a pullback at the $35 an ounce range, which we kind of reached, you know, maybe it does have a pullback back to 30 or something like that before going much higher. But, you know, at the same time, if you sell at 35, maybe silver only corrects to 33 and then it's back up from there, you could actually um, have to buy in higher um, depending on how long it takes you to realize that you were incorrect on that kind of intermediate type of cycle timing. So that's why I don't try to play these kind of smaller moves in the metals. Um, I will be trying to, you know, get out, um, you know, when I think a peak is close and it's always so hard to gauge when that is actually there because, you know, assets can go up a lot higher than you think they will. Of course, they might not even go to the targets you have for them. I like to think, you know, my conservative target on silver is, you know, just revisiting the $50 an ounce area. There are a few people I, you know, look to in the markets and things like that who think silver can go, you know, significantly beyond the $50 an ounce area. So me personally, if silver gets to $50 an ounce and there's still a lot of skepticism and just not much enthusiasm in silver. I would probably still wait to see it go higher before I start to sell out of my positions. But, you know, kind of playing it by ear, if silver gets to $50 an ounce and, you know, there's just tons of enthusiasm, um, the premiums being paid on all these bullion physical coins are really high and, you know, the miners have really caught up and things like that. You know, if it starts to look like it's getting to be a crowded market, which it's nowhere close to that right now, but if it does, you know, I might start to take some profits at the $50 an ounce area simply because that's silver, you know, prior two time all time highs. So, you know, probably there's going to be a lot of selling taking place at the $50 an ounce area. Yeah, maybe we consolidate there and continue to go a lot higher from $50 an ounce, but just personally, I think that's where I'll be starting to take some profits. Um, so yeah, going forward, I guess my expectations for silver, um, you know, yeah, we could see some pullbacks along the way. Um, in terms of resistance between here and $50 an ounce, there isn't actually a lot, you know, looking at the prior charts going back, the 2011 breakout silver had, there's probably the most resistance around the 35 dollar an ounce area. So I would say, you know, my view is that once silver, I guess, decisively gets higher than 35 an ounce, there isn't actually that much of, you know, resistance levels between the 35 to 50. So that's a pretty dramatic increase that you could see fairly quickly, in my opinion. I could be totally wrong on this, by the way. <laughs> um, gold, you know, it's been kind of a more clear setup the last year gold just kind of continuing to march higher. And I do continue to see that play out, um, you know, nowhere near of aggressive as a move higher in silver as what I expect, but, you know, definitely north of the $3,000 an ounce area. Um, you know, that could even be expected to happen this year. Um, just at the current rate that gold is going at, you know, having these occasional, you know, three or 4% pullbacks along the way. Um, you know, these are kind of my expectations. And of course, you know, the miners, I think they do kind of track silver a lot more closely than gold, just in terms of um, the miners finally playing catch up and enthusiasm growing in the precious metals mining complex. So, you know, if silver does have a move like that going $50 and maybe beyond that, you know, you could see the miners um, really play catch up as well as they, you know, really lagged the physical metals for quite some time now. So, you know, these are just my thoughts, gold and silver, of course, kind of making a follow-up video to the one I made a week ago. I think it's a little more clear right now that silver is in its breakout phase. And yeah, we're kind of just in it for the ride. And we will see uh, how this uh, takes shape from here. So I'd love to hear all of your comments in the comment section below. And um, yeah, hope to see all of you again at some point.